Our topic of discussion for today is the components of disaster management. So in today's topic and today's lecture, uh, we are going to discuss the major or main components that can be followed during the disaster management or disaster risk reduction management. So let's start from the beginning. What can be the main components of disaster management? In these, there are four major uh, components or major parts or phases that can be applied during the cycle of disaster management. So these can be considered the main components of disaster management. Firstly, we will discuss about the mitigation measures that can be applied during the disaster management. Any kind of disaster depends also how can we mitigate these. And secondly, we go to the preparedness like preparing for that response what can we respond how time we respond and last but not the least recovery these four phases are these four uh, components are being considered are being considered as uh, on the basis of how these can be applied or these measure measure can be taken before and after an event like a mitigation part that can be taken before and after an event same as well in the medication preparedness and then in response how would you respond during and immediately after an event but in recovery stage we can only apply the recovery phase during the long term after the disaster in the long term phases or sustainable phases after the disaster or an event being occur these four uh, aspects are the four phases are the key are the key points or key phases processes that can sustainably sustainably give a solution or give a reduction part to the disaster for life property and financial condition reduction like in these if we apply this uh, sustainably and very um, Marketably, then the it can least reduce the post disaster loss of life, like I have discussed before. Property and economic condition are of any society are masses. In a successful, successful disaster risk management, it is required that these can be implemented in all phases of that cycle. Like if, we, if you go for disaster risk reduction cycle, then these are the major four phases. Likewise, we will discuss also further in the other talks. Like we better know about the disaster risk and other type of terminologies that I have been discussed in the first and second chapters. So let's move towards these four phases or four components, major components during the disaster management cycle or disaster or an event management that is uh, negative or that kind of risk for any society or for any uh, masses. So let's start and move uh, with the topics. So the first component of disaster risk management is um, about the mitigation. Might be taken before and after an event or a disaster event. Actually, the mitigation reduces the likelihood that a severity of disaster may be reduced by implementing the sustained action, not sustainable action, like improved construction practices or other kind of long-term risk that can be occurred to our to the property or the people of any society or any area. It also includes the reduction of possibility of disaster reduction of need of assistance from system we need uh, from the system we uh, actually mean that these area or these society people or these masses may require less or little <coughs> assistance in any emergency or any kind of disaster action of the medication can include as an assessment like first we have to assess the hazard or that kind of risk to that specific area after that, vulnerability analysis, how much this area or people are vulnerable to that kind of specific disaster or an event or any kind of risk. After that, risk assessment, how much risk is possibly possible because of that disaster or because of that kind of specific event or in specific area of that and after that is a risk evaluation how much how much possibly the risk will be uh, give, will give the uh, economy or people or financial uh, kind of 
crunch to that area or that area. After that is the vulnerability reduction of mitigation or mitigation strategies. Vulnerability of vulnerability reduction means if that area is vulnerable to type kind of specific disaster or any kind of risk so how much mitigation we can how much uh, my mitigation measures or any kind of steps can follow to reduce that kind of vulnerability of the, these people to save them from that kind of disaster that can also be structural and not structural structural means if that is specified or some localized area localized things are infrastructures or that cannot be immovable and the non structural means which can be moved or which are movable. It also means that structural kind of things are material, material kind of things that comes in infrastructure or oh, any kind of crops, uh, etc. Non structural means like the people livelihood or the people social way of income or the people psychological um, way of uh, setup that can be damage other can be served from that kind of vulnerability of disaster so the last but not least is the integration of disaster risk reduction activities in all development activities making it mandatory it just simply means like simply if you follow the eis step during any developmental phase environmental impact assessment you better know being environmentalist so these processes uh, can be the developmental phase mandatory uh, step like in diet farm if, if you are going to construct any kind of road building or etc so in that stage you will <coughs> you will have to make first evaluate and assess how much possibly this area this project is in vulnerable to that any kind of this natural or Man-made disaster. So in that case, it can be a possible reduction, uh, reduction of mitigation measure for any kind of possible disaster in future. So up ne uh, up come next is the preparedness. How much, how much prepared, how much prepared is for prepare uh, prepare prepared, prepared, prepared measures measures can be taken for any kind of disaster event. Preparedness uh, actually reduces the severity of disaster. How by preparing people for disaster, it specifically um, include the development plans to ensure an effective response and recovery and training people to implement plans after a disaster. But it actually includes prediction and warning for different disasters. How much possibly the people are in area is in knowledge and information to be informed or to be uh, predicted for any kind of a possible disaster or possible uh, calamity events. So emergency preparedness like for monitoring alert and evacuation in proper time and immediate disaster resistant to set up medical operations like if any disaster occur any kind of that can if even occur so in that sense in that case what can be done last but not least the deployment of search and rescue teams and distribution of disaster supplies and equipments can also be reached to that kind of disaster area the education training and public awareness should be put in that place uh, at first because if the people are educated they are trained and they are aware about that kind of disaster so they will uh, be helpful in helping other peoples also they will aware other peoples as well as if they will be aware uh, themselves to be better cope with that kind of disaster or that kind of risk or any kind of um, unwanted events so that was the preparedness uh, is, is especially uh, is supposed to be come in the first place because the awareness and public uh, um, awareness and public education and training and the mass communication through mass communication kind of media is the very first and hmm, like a big one step to be implementing disaster management uh, knowledge move towards it's about the recovery it's the uh, last phase of that uh, disaster management cycle how patterly we can recover after the disaster uh, occur and in the long term phase and sustainable phase of after that disaster arrangement it is an implementation of actions to promote sustainable development like i have discussed following a disaster if disaster occur some event occur then including a new building code like if you mitigate 
if we possibly uh, apply some kind of mitigation measures or other kind of planning and management and strategies we apply our strategies then we can better recover after that event and in the long term and sustainable way so the main points of recovery can be the <coughs> rehabilitation how better we rehabilitate after a rehabilitate after an event or disaster event or so reconstructions these also include the four phases the suggestion it is absolutely necessary to consider medical my yards these can be relocation land use zoning etc and it also includes the rebuilding of our buildings how how can better be can rebuild the houses and how betterly we respond to that after that disaster and with how much safety we are building that houses financing for rebuilding how much we will need economical conditions are there or the sustainable development there and the repair of roads bridges and other kind of infrastructures during which is the, which has been given during that disasters last two, but not least and the second last is psychological counseling like if someone has been passed through that kind of disaster and they are lively so they can possibly be the Increase of post-traumatic stress disorder, other kind of dizziness, other kind of psychological uh, disease or problems are there. So they can how can better you can counsel or how better they can be counseled in the long term that they can be same uh, and normal people of that society of that disaster area. In in the long term, if you see assistance to rebuild community is a critical survival. Long term, a sustainable way to rebuild a community is a critical for survival in that all phases if they are economical financial and psychological and etc etc so that was uh, little and more about the four and important phases of disaster management cycle hopefully we will also elaborate other kind of uh, disaster management cycle related uh, terminologies and other strategies in the upcoming next chapters